Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. And previously I did a video on using the mason jar test on soil to, to separate the layers of sand, silt, and clay in your soil. You're usually using this to determine the texture of your soil, but the question I got more than once was, can I also use that to take that layer of clay out of there and harvest that for other uses? What other uses, I thought? Well, of course, people use clay for things like pottery and other projects. So yes, you can definitely use this exact same method. And what I'm going to do today, I found a spot in my yard that looked promising for clay content. I dug underneath my compost file, pile and found a spot where it fe felt a little clumpy. I'll show you some footage of that. And I filled up this bucket with some of those big, heavy clods of what felt like clay soil. Don't know the exact mixture, but that's what the, the clay test will determine, what the mason jar test will determine, is how much of that was clay. So I broke that up into some smaller pieces, and what I'll be doing with this mason jar is I'll, alongside, as I extract the clay from this bucket, I'm also going to do it in this clear uh, mason jar to show you how and why that works to get you separated clay. All right, hang on, let's soak it in some water. I'm going to add some water to both of these. The water that I'm adding, you can fill up the whole container at this point, but I'm not going to stir it up just yet. I want the material, the soil in there, to have a little bit of time to soak in the water and swell if it's clay and really start to dissolve. That's Dissolving is an important step to this. I'm going to fill it up with water in the main bucket here, and I'm also going to fill it up in the mason jar. You're filling just to leave a tiny bit of air space for mixing around. So I've taken the video under cover here uh, because it got quite bright outside, but I want to show you that that scum across the top of the, uh, of the mixture has started to rise. And what you do see in there is little chunks of charcoal, uh, little uh, bits of bark and perlite and uh, just the kind of stuff that collected in the soil by my compost that is light and organic and shouldn't be in your clay mix anyway. So I'm going to dump that. Now it's also time to mix and in the mason jar probably accomplish that with something like a spoon or a knife. But in the big bin I can't think of anything better than maybe my shovel blade or my hand. The advantage of doing it with my hand is that I can get a feel at the material that's at the bottom there and see what it's like. Is it fully dissolved or is it still in chunks or clods? That's really one of what, it, what I want to avoid. And I'm just pulling this up here and I can see that some of these are rocks, but other ones, I'm gonna see if I can get a better view here. Other ones of these are still clayish type clods that I can actually squeeze and break up in my hand. That is what you can't have in there for you to do this successfully. You have to have all of those clods fully dissolved. So having done it with the big uh, bucket with the same soil in it, I've also filled this mason jar a third of the way with the soil and it has been fully dissolved in the same time frame. So now I'm just giving that a vigorous stir because I want to show you how those layers fall out over time. The bottom layer will be sand and gravel, the middle layer will be silt, and what's remaining suspended in the water after a half hour should be your clay content. Now. It doesn't take long to start to work. If you look at the bottom of the jar right now, and I'll see if I can get you a close-up here, is that the sand has already started to fall out of the suspension. It's uh, sitting there at the bottom of the jar, already making a layer of, oh, say, a half inch or so at the very bottom of the jar. Now, the silt will take some time to drop out. The time frame on that is about a half hour. I'm going to put this into sort of fast motion so you can actually see some of the action of the soil particles falling out of suspension and leaving the clay in the top layer. All right, I'm going to insert some footage of the mason jar test and the results of that. And what you can see is that over the course of the first half hour of that jar settling, the layers start to become distinct the sand layer will drop out almost immediately. At the bottom quarter inch of that jar, you have the sand and the gravel that's fallen out of the solution within the first 
even five to ten seconds it happens. Uh, within the next 15 to 30 minutes, you'll see the silt layer develop on the bottom of that jar. And then everything that's above that is presumed to be suspended clay. Now you can see it only settled down to about half the height of the jar. So that's what I'm going to be using as my guideline for how much clay is going to be in this soil. And I want to be safe. I really don't want to siphon out uh, any of that silt material and have that go into the purified solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a siphon here. Now I've seen versions of this where people just pour off the bucket into the other bucket. What I'm afraid that will do is it will disturb that silt layer that settled to the bottom and then I'll end up uh, re-dissolving re that into the whole profile of the water and I don't want to do that. Now siphoning is uh, something that a lot of people have done if you've cleaned aquariums. Uh, it's just a simple thing. I have filled this short length of hose, maybe three feet of hose, up with uh, water and if I put my fingers over both ends of this, insert one end into this and then release as I put the bottom end into the lower bucket, I should be able to establish a si siphon that pushes the water from the, the, uh, from the, the depth that I have my hose inserted up here into the lower bucket. Let's give it a try. There you go, and I hope you can hear that. It's, uh, it's siphoning nicely. And I've placed the bottom end of the hose in the top bucket here, oh, about halfway down. And there it is, all settled out. Uh, or all siphoned down and I'll give you a close-up of this in just a minute but uh, what I presume is that the bottom half of the settled water here including the sand and the silt is sitting still in this bucket here and then I've removed just the suspended clay into the bottom bucket here and you see this is only about halfway full so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this process I might even repeat it and fill two buckets here with purified clay water and the reason I'm doing that is I just have no idea how much clay this will develop into because I've only taken a portion of the water from each of the buckets so uh, I guess we'll see that when I let it settle and I extract the clay for you. Well I thought that leaving it for a week would clear up the division between water and clay and it was nowhere close so to be honest I took the path of least resistance I stuck this underneath a workbench and forgot about it for a month now that I've come back to it, it is an absolutely clear layer of water on the top and clay on the bottom, right to about this point here. I'll try to get you a close up so you can see on the side of the bucket as light comes through, there's definitely a layer of solids at the bottom and liquids at the top here. And this liquid at the top here, while still slightly kind of brownish, is really, really uh, much clearer than it was before. So now I think what I have is a solid layer of clay at the bottom, so I'm going to pour this off. Now what I could do is just do a siphon like I did before for the other layers, but I think in this case I'm going to chance it and just try to pour it off and see what remains in the bottom of the bucket. And there we go. That uh, is a fully settled layer of clay. Just wanted to show you here. This is about 12 hours later. I've just had this inside. It's starting to firm up a little bit. It was quite soupy to begin with. But you can see what I'm doing here is just working it around. I've got a fan running in this area and it's just drying up the balls a little bit. And at the end of it, I'll have these three balls of clay. Well, this is the shot I've been waiting for where I have a ball of purified clay from my, made from the soil in my own backyard. I'm purified, I mean I've taken out all the gravel, all the sand, all the silt to get this ball of what I presume to be pure clay. I have no idea if this is any good for pottery or for brick making or for any other clay type project. I suspect that would have an awful lot to do with the chemistry of the clay in my soil. What I do know is that this same method would work for you as long as you have a reasonable amount of clay in your source soil. And 
The method in short, of course, is very, very simple. All you're doing is suspending all of that soil and water and then siphoning off the portion of the water after the sand and the silt have settled out to get just clay water and then you just leave that to settle over a length of time. Now, what will differ for you if you have different amounts of clay in your soil is how much this process yields. In my case, I processed four buckets of soil to make two full buckets of clay water and what I ended up with was 10 balls like this, two pounds a, peach, a piece, so it's about 20 pounds of purified clay from my own backyard. Uh, it was a little bit labor intensive, it actually took about a month, but most of that was waiting time, just waiting for the clay to settle down to the bottom of the bucket. All right, if you have any questions about this, please drop that down into the comments below the video and thank you so much for watching today.